Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Monday Morning Cooking Club, very last Zoom cook-along for 2020. Mm -hmm. I'm Lisa. Hi, I'm Natanya. And we are, of course, part of the Monday Morning Cooking Club, and we're super excited to be with you. Despite what's going on around us, despite what's going on around the world, we all want to take, like, 40 minutes out of our day, out of your day, out of our day, and just focus on... Cooking and making some two things that we promise you wherever you are in the world, you are going to enjoy fully. Um, and really, use either the summer and adapt or the winter. So many different yeah, ways. and these yeah. recipes are great for summer or winter. We'll give you the option, actually, yeah. we'll talk about that as well. Absolutely. The pitch of alternative to stone fruit. Um, um, okay, yeah. so Irene said, Should you have made the pastry already? You didn't have to, we'll go through it with you now. Let's start with this pastry. First, these two recipes come from our new book, Now for Something Sweet. And they are probably two of our favourite pastries because oh, there's a timer. Oh, that's hold on, pause there. Because the story of this pastry goes way, way back to when I first moved to Sydney in the late eighties from Melbourne. Just have a look at this. Yeah, yeah, just have a look. So at we this. just made one ahead so that we'd have something to show you at the end, and we're just giving you a sneak preview. Looks unbelievably good. That's a beautiful. Fruit galette. It could really, it looks exactly like the one in the book, which uh, oh, and yours will too. So when I first moved to Sydney, we went to this amazing cooking retreat. I organised for about 15 girlfriends to go and we went to the Hakwadal Gourmet Retreat in the snowy uh, mountain country, the snow of well, the snowies in Victoria, run by a chef, Marika Brugman. And she honestly is one of the best chefs I think Australia's ever had. And her recipes that she taught us, this is in 1989, have stuck with us and been with us for so long. And this pastry recipe is her recipe. And I don't think in your life you, you could actually live with just one pastry recipe and it could be this one. It's well, so amazing. We can argue about that. <laughs> but let's talk about the ingredients for the pastry. But it is an amazing Okay, so pastry. you're going to need, um, let me get this other thing. And out. I'll just say, if you're not... A pastry maker because lots of people are a little bit nervous to make pastry and they buy this is a great starter for you you cannot go wrong with it five minutes to make it rolls out easily easily easy easy worth trying yeah and once you've tasted this pastry you will never buy pastry again yeah, truly it's, it's just unbelievable it has three ingredients in it and salt we've got 240 grams of plain flour that's all-purpose flour for those of you in the USA, we have 200 grams of cold, unsalted butter. Fridge cold. And I've it chopped it, in the fridge. cut it into cubes this morning and put it back in the fridge. And someone said, what page is it in the book? It is page 153 in the book, the summer fruit galette. So we've got 200 grams of cold, unsalted butter if you've got. If you've only got salted butter, then use it. Just don't add any salt. And 125 grams. And I should really give measurements in, um, so 125 grams is half a cup or four and a half ounces of sour cream. So I'll repeat that again, 240 grams, which is one and a half heaped cups or, or eight and a half ounces of plain flour, 200 grams or seven ounces of unsalted butter that's chopped and cold and half a cup, 125 grams of sour cream. And a little bit, we're gonna add to that. A little bit of salt. A little bit of salt. Okay. so. Of course, if you're using salted butter, you would not add any. Yes. So I'm going to put the flour, and the recipe says just to put everything in, but I'm just going to do it um, the way I always do pastry, which is to put in the flour, the butter, and then we can put the salt in now too, okay. and the salt in there now before the sour cream. I'm going to just pulse it until rough crumbs form. And if you don't have a food processor, you can use a um, pastry cutter, which is oh. one of those rubber so, things it's actually over in the drawer the left drawer at the top there a pastry powder which natalie will show you or your fingertips um fingertips is hard with cold butter it's hard work so um yeah it's gonna be hard there it is okay. yeah. so i'm just gonna pulse it this is a fabulous little tool to have if you don't own a food processor i love making pastry with it and you just cut through flour and the butter. So the there's a few little lumps of butter. I don't mind that at all, but it's pretty much nicely combined. And now I'm going to add in the sour cream, just like that. And I'm going to pulse it until it just forms a ball. 
but you can see how easy it is. Really, really and how easy. quick it is. There's no water in this pastry, there's no egg in this pastry, and surprise, surprise, there is no sugar in this pastry. And I actually love a sweet tart with pastry that doesn't have yeah, sugar in okay. it. You don't need it. And, you, and just put it just till it comes together, like just comes together, because then you can bring it, the rest of it together. I've got to say it's very hard if your butter's cold to overwork this in the food processor. Like you really have to, you know, work it so much so that it starts to melt for it to ruin this pastry. So you can see it's all starting to come together. That's it. And I throw it straight on a, uh, a piece of either cling wrap or baking paper. Now, this quantity of pastry is good for two galettes or one galette and one bunch of anchovy twists. So what I would do is actually roll that into a ball now on the bench and then cut it in half and I would yeah. freeze one of them for another day, mark it sour cream pastry in half a batch and use one of them now. So put it in the fridge to rest and use one of them now. Let me just pop this away. It is just, I'll be back in a sec. It is just wonderful. Um, to have a disc of this pastry sitting in the freezer for just there, it will last you three good months in the freezer. Yeah, and at then least, at least. when and all of a sudden you can just pull it out and make one of these recipes and you're good to go. It is, it's That's it. a great idea. And don't overwork it at this stage. Don't warm it with your hands and let the butter melt. That's it, done in the fridge. Super easy. Can't get easier than that. So I've got that in the fridge now. And let's talk anchovy twists. Okay, so this is a recipe um, from my very good friend Judy, who anyone who knows Judy will know that when you go to her house, or if you've been to her house any time over the last 15 years, you would have been served an anchovy twist. It's one of those things you make them can roll them into the shape and you can put them in the freezer and then suddenly when you need them you've got friends over or you feel like them yourself on a Sunday afternoon with a drink you can put them in the oven and 25 minutes later you have the most delectable things in the world will I show you what they look like um, I'm almost like tempted to make it a surprise because they're so amazing I'm, I'm almost tempted to eat one <laughs> like just have a look at that that's what I made this morning in two minutes like it's it, they're so easy they're so delicious. And I always joke with my friends that don't eat anchovies. I call these the gateway. Yes. The gateway pastry to anchovies. Because once you the anchovy's not that strong in it. No, it's got just you pastry. just get a beautiful salty, salty, crispy, flaky bite. But um it's not really you don't even know. If if I gave it to someone who doesn't like anchovies and they didn't know that they were eating anchovy in it, they would love it. Okay, so now I'm going to make the anchovy twists first and then Natty's going to make the galette. Yes. And don't worry, you don't have to wait till we cook them because we've cooked them ahead and you'll just see us go to put it in the oven and then the finished product. So on a floured bench, some people like to roll on baking paper. I prefer not generally. This sort of, this, this pastry is so easy to work with that you really don't need baking paper. You just need a bit of flour. Um, okay, so flour. Rolling pin. I need to cut it in half. So this is already half the recipe. I need to cut it in half again because I'm going to roll it out into two lots. Let me just check if that's right. I think it is. Okay. So this is a quarter of the pastry. Okay. And I'm going to roll it out and I'm trying to get a rectangle, a long rectangle or strip that's going to be 40 centimetres by 25. For those of you who aren't metric, it's about, um, you know, we should have checked that. It's, 12, it's, it's about, about um, 16 inches, oh. 16 inches by eight inches, okay? So you'll see in a minute what I'm gonna do. I want a long, wide strip because that needs to fit two anchovies head to head almost, if you wanna put it that way. And I'm just gonna roll it out. And yes, I do use a ruler in the kitchen quite a lot. Do you? Yeah, yeah. always. Especially a recipe like this, yeah. where we've gone, we've really tried very hard to make sure that the measurement is oh, is right. Let me just talk about the anchovies. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So these are the anchovies. Um, 
take your anchovies out. Thank you for reminding me of that, actually. Take your anchovies out of the jar now. So I'll show you what I'm using. I'm not an anchovy lover. I am an anchovy absolute lover. But these Ortiz ones are, yep. without a doubt, the best brand that we can mm -hmm. buy here. You can just eat them. But That's they cool. are super expensive. They are. And you have to decide for yourself if you want to use these in the pastries or you can buy from any fruit shop or gourmet shop anchovies that are really mm -hmm. nice. I mean, I would use these in a salad dressing, these ones. Yeah. Um, when you're, when you're cooking, cooking yeah. fantastic. And you decide if you like the flavour of these enough for the pastry because all you're tasting here is anchovy and pastry. So I use these ones and some are big and some are small. It's a good question. And when you have little tiny ones like this, I'm just oh, going to put them together and pretend yeah. that they're one. Okay? Yeah, because there's a the little jar of anchovies that I see in the supermarket. They're, they're, they're tiny. They're tiny yeah. little yeah. anchovies. So you probably do two. So I'm just gently rolling it out. And you can see how easy it is to roll. We were laughing before because Natalie always says, you know, take your pastry out of the freezer the night before so it cools, it, you know, comes to, to temperature in the fridge overnight yeah. and then bring it out. And of course, I forgot and remembered. I did remember at four o'clock in the morning, but didn't get out of bed. And I took it out of the freezer at 7.30 and left it on the bench and it's fine. You know, my kitchen's not yeah. too hot and it's fine. So what I'm trying to get here is two things I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make it not stick to the bench. So if it's, I've got to keep checking. And just putting a bit of flour underneath so it doesn't stick as I roll it. And I need to get it to that size. Two anchovies length, width, and wide enough for the recipe says 15 anchovies. So it actually helps when you start with your your block in a in sort of the shape that you're looking for. Yeah. So I'm just gonna keep checking every every you know roll or so and it's not sticking to the bottom. And just a light scattering of flour on the bench top because you don't want it to stick when you put the anchovies on. That would just be annoying. Okay. And if you are working in a kitchen that is quite hot, I know um, in the Southern Hemisphere we're in summer now um, and it's quite humid, just work fast. So measurement wise, that's perfect. That's 40. And that's actually 20, not 25, but my anchovies aren't that big. So rectangle, again, two anchovies in width. So I want to be able to put one, two, and because I'm going to fold it over in a minute. And that's it. So everyone's got their rectangle if anyone is following along. And now I'm going to, I'm just going to, go, just going to go a tiny bit wider. Now, I've got the pastry quite thin. I can actually see yeah. the bench underneath and I can also see butter. And that's what you want with this pastry because it's when it cooks, it puffs so beautifully from the butter and the sour cream that if the butter was melted into it, you wouldn't yeah. get that. Okay, now I'm going to lay my anchovies on one half of it. So because I've only got a few here to show you, otherwise we'll be here all day, I just want to show you how we do it. You can see that, lining them up nicely. Yeah, there's a few centimetres in between each one. A probably, finger, a finger space, yeah, probably actually. a finger space. Not too yeah. much, actually, because you just don't want, otherwise you end up with too much um, pastry and not enough anchovy. So I'm just going to lay them side by side like that. And with your 15 anchovies, you would just go all the way across. A little one. And I'm just going to line them up. Yeah, probably a finger width between them. And we'll just stop there now because, yeah, you know. You can just trim them. Yeah, so I'm just going to cut that because we're not going to use this at the moment. And I'm going to keep that for later. It is so precious and I don't want to. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And now what you need to do is just cut it across, which is going to be halfway across your piece and you're going to lift this up and pop it on top. So you've now got the anchovies covered by the second pastry and you're going to take your finger and you're going to put it in between and just press down and trim if it's too much at the end because you'll see there'll be too much pastry in it. Keep your trimmings and then you're going to cut in between each anchovy 
I mean, there's, this pastry is probably the easiest pastry to work yeah. with that I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, and if there's excess pastry at the end, you can trim it. You don't have to. Any questions, please ask us. We would love to answer them. And now you could just take them. I'm just trimming a bit. I'm not gonna just, you know. And then you just take your little parcel and just twist it like that, like this. And then grab, we need a baking tray with some baking paper. And then just twist it and put it on. And that's it, and twist it a few times so it's really well twisted. And press the ends together a little bit, and that's it. So you can see, super easy. If you and wanted to freeze them, you can freeze, I would freeze them on a tray till they're rock solid, and then just put them in a plastic bag. And bring them out from the freezer and bake them frozen, add another five minutes to the cooking time. But now, would you put them into the fridge just to, um to get a you can. Harder before you can. You bake them. I always like to put my pastry in the fridge before yeah. baking because I think you get a better result. Um, the colder it is today, it's a really warm day, and I can feel it just getting softer by the second. Um, oh, hi Karen. Can you use cheese? Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, instead of anchovies. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it might be nice. What do I think? I'm thinking out loud, but you could actually get like a. You could, of course, use just grated cheese and sprinkle it, but you could just get a cut length, like matchsticks of Gruyere, and put them along it and twist it around the cheese, which I think would be lovely. You could also and do something like um, chop some herbs and mix it in with um, some soft cheese, make a paste, and then get it really cold and make little strips of it and put that in. Yeah, you could do so that. Would be, that would be really lovely. Um, lots of options. Yeah. Um, and yeah, cheese is a great one. And could you use anything other than anchovies? We really want you to try the anchovies. The anchovies, like, I, I, I just want to urge everybody, urge you, you, come on, like really, I'm not an anchovy fan. I'm really, really not. And these are so good and so delicious and so easy for entertaining. Really, those cheese would be great. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, so shall we talk about so now the garlic? If, if there is one dessert that you need to make in summer, this is it. it. As you saw how easy it is to make the pastry, it is so easy to turn it into a galette. It's so rustic, so you don't need to be precise. You can use whatever you want. Today I am using two peaches and two nectarines. Um, and I'm going to do it and then we'll talk about different things that you can use because there's loads, loads of different combinations. So I take, I've, I've started to slice my fruit and I've got quite big peaches and nectarines today. And this is, so I cut it, I cut a cheek off because what are they called? Slip stones are not here yet. Yeah. So I can, slip I'm just using are, the cheeks. Slip stones are much, much easier for baking. Yeah. Um, we all know that because, you know, you just cut them in half and twist and they come apart. Yeah. But these so, are And you know what's good about it? It leaves this for me to eat this. Yes, exactly. So you take your cheek, Cut it in half and then each quarter cut into three. Oh. Um, that's for these big ones because they're quite big. If they're not so, if your peaches and nectarines are smaller, then just cut each quarter into two um, and you'll get this is plenty. I know the taste plenty. of summer. I know, I agree. And I haven't eaten enough. This nectarine, you know when it's beautifully sweet but the tiniest bit tart? Well, actually, that's because you like don't it. want your stone fruit to be too soft. Um, you don't want it, obviously, to be green, but you want it to be firm because um, you'll get the best result. I'll just move up a tiny bit. Sorry, no, I'm holding the stage. No, but you're cooking. You're cook no, no, it's fine. I'm just aware that it's been okay. skewed with the screen today. Um, okay, any other questions, please ask them as we go along. Okay. So there is my fruit. This and is so good. I'm just going to do this for before you start rolling out your pastry, it's probably good to have your fruit ready to go. So in a bowl, I'm gonna throw my slices. And to that, I am going to add, sorry, a tablespoon of caster sugar and 
I think it's half a teaspoon of vanilla. I'm just going to. And somebody's some asked in. about Thai the food processor. So mine is a Magi Mix. Um, a Magi Mix cuisine system. Um, and I've had it for a long, long, long time. Um, and it's a really good everyday um, food processor. I use the Breville. Whiz Pro. Whiz Pro, which yeah. is fabulous. It's yeah. big, yeah. but we, um, we, we've all got the um, Breville Whiz Pro because we did a couple of things with Breville years ago and they gave us one of these to try. No, actually, and we that's loved not true. It. I bought one first, the Whiz Pro, and found it to be the most amazing food processor. And then they gave us a couple yeah. after that. So I've got to just acknowledge that. But we don't have a relationship with them anymore because um, we just don't, no reason. The food processor from Breville is very, very good yeah. um, for slicing, particularly uh, making salads and Brussels sprouts and zucchinis and didn't you potatoes. Use it just now for Hanukkah? Oh, for, for grating, grating potatoes, it is unbelievable. Um, but I actually use the Magi Mix from Pastry, oh, interestingly, because oh. it's less to wash and it's less bulky. But, you know, okay, okay back to so that. Your fruit's ready. There you go. And now we're going to do the pastry. Now, Lisa likes to work on the bench, and I actually prefer to work on Okay, just to answer the question. So, vanilla paste is actually vanilla bean paste, which is, um, we use the one by a company called, and I've forgotten their name now, Mad it's Madagascar Bourbon yes, Vanilla from, yes. um, I'll grab it. So, it is got actually the vanilla beans in it crushed up. They mix it with alcohol and they do whatever they do. And we find the flavour of this so true to vanilla. I mean, it is just like eating the vanilla bean and vanilla bean paste is delicious. It's particularly good when you're making a custard um, or a cream or a pastry where you want to see the vanilla flecks in yeah, it. It's lovely. Well. Or on the fruit. I'll just get the brand. Um, I'm just rolling out my... Oh, yeah, that's right. So you, we made... It's, um, um, it's um, yeah, Nielsen, Nielsen Massey, N-I-E-L-S-E-N Massey. Um, we buy it from Simon Johnson in Sydney. Um, it's an expensive product, but it's a really excellent oh. product. You could drink it from the jar. I remember so we I, did a taste test. Remember, yeah. we tasted all the different vanillas just on a, the tip yeah. of a spoon. And there is such a difference. Just for your and, own. And the question is, would you want to put something in your cooking that you don't want, wouldn't want to eat? So taste your vanilla at home. And if you like the taste of it, then stick with it. But otherwise, explore what else is out there. Um, that was a long answer to a very quick question, sorry. Um, and last thing, sorry, lost sound. How much caster sugar and how many peaches? So we use two peaches and two nectarines, so four stone fruit of your choice, and one tablespoon of sugar, half a teaspoon of vanilla. There we go. Okay. So you can just use a cake tin as a rough guide. A rough guide. 26 centimetres. You want some sort of circle shape as best as you can do um, when you're rolling it out. It doesn't have to be beautiful. That is the beauty of this recipe. It's rustic. Um, so first thing we're going to do before we throw our fruit in is spread two tablespoons of apricot jam. And I'm just, again, as you can see, I'm not measuring anything. I'm just round about. And you yeah. want to leave a good border because you're going to fold fold the edges in. So it says, I think, in the book, five centimetres. Someone said, can you get this in Toronto? Uh, it's made in the USA, so I'm sure. It's um, made in Illinois. So there you go. Nielsen Massey, Madagascar mm. bourbon, the vanilla paste. Yes. Beautiful product. Yes. Yum. I love the bits. Yeah, so do I. And do it's you so eat nice them? To keep, to keep them. You know, yeah, we're talking about yeah. the little bits in the, the apricot fruit. jam, the fruit. Yeah. You want, um, you want, you don't want a too runny jam if yeah. you can help it. But there you go. Easy. And then we're taking one tablespoon of almond meal um, and just shaking that on top. That's just to help soak up some of the juices of the fruit. Oh, thanks, Lois. Hi, Lois. Um, Lois buys hers on Amazon, so you can get it on Amazon. And this is um, vanilla bean paste. It's really, I love it. And then you're going to take your fruit. Now, some people probably place it on beautifully and um, you know, in a, in a circular yeah. thing. And I just... I have one. I can't... My mouth's just watering because fruit and vanilla 
It's oh. such a combination, maybe, Heather. I just pile it on. The more rustic. Oh, the it's better. so yum. Mm. Yeah. And again, you don't want to go right to the edge. You, you want to keep that five centimetre border so you've got some pastry to fold over. Beautiful. And I love seeing the little specks of vanilla. Um, and we're going to talk in a minute about what you, you, all of you in the Northern Hemisphere are going to do because oh, yeah. you're not going to buy peaches and apricots flying in from Australia. We don't want you to do that. We want you to use what's in season where you are. Absolutely. <coughs> Excuse me. I was thinking about some different combinations. So um, if you have access to stone fruit, um, I thought apricots work beautifully. And I thought it would actually be really nice if you're using apricot to um, use pistachio meal, like chop up some pistachios instead of the almond. Mm, that would that's go really nice. nice. Um, and then, of course, there's plums. And I think even with the plums, you could use hazelnut. I think, I think the well. thing you've got to be careful with the plums is that they release so much juice yes. when you cook them. Yeah. And um, I'd be nervous with plums. I think it's I think. okay if you, if you get them and they're not too soft. So you've got all your fruit in the middle. Mm. And now all you need to do is fold it over. Now, as you fold, you just can put in a little pleat. I'm going to just bring to everybody over. Okay. Stay in place. And I, as rustic as this is, I do like my pleats all to go the same direction. But you can do whatever you want. And the pastry seed, because it's getting quite warm, so I'm going to put it back in the fridge before we cook it. And that's it. Just press it down so it will stay in place. It is. That's right. Great. Now, that needs to be egg wash. And then we do a sprinkling of demerara sugar just over the pastry. But before I do that, and before I even egg wash it, because it's warm here, I'm going to just lift that up. I'm going to throw that in the fridge just for 10 minutes for the pastry to firm up. Then I'm going to egg wash it, demerara sugar it, and into the oven for 40 minutes. I'm going to just tell them about the hot tray. Yeah. And I'll yeah. Them. yeah. Okay. So um, we think it's, the thing that sometimes happens with this galette is the underside of the pastry, the base, and it happens in so many tarts and pies. Everywhere you go, every restaurant, you'll see the bottom's not quite cooked. And the secret to fixing that problem is to put it onto a hot tray. So have your tray in the oven now, like just a flat oven tray, and then take, we're gonna take that off the baking, off the tray, hold it by the baking paper and slip it onto the hot tray in the oven so that the bottom will start to cook immediately. Um, that's that's really the best tip we can give you. Because it's been in the fridge for 10 minutes, it's quite firm. It's very easy just to lift off and transfer onto yeah. the hot tray. So I will show you the, the egg washing in a yes. minute. We'll do yeah. that last thing. Because I just want to tell you about another option for that galette, which we did a few weeks oh, ago. Um, unbelievable. Which is to, and the recipe originally came from a girl called Susie Rosen, who runs a very lovely Facebook page out of Sydney called Friday Night. It's, um, and if you just go to Facebook and look up Friday Night from Australia, you'll see that that's it and you've got to join. Mm. Um, and it just talks about what everybody's cooking for their Friday night dinners. Is it Friday of, night cooking? Uh, no, I think it's just Friday night. And, and it just shares lots of recipes. Anyway, so she came up with this recipe for a um, banana and duck, banana Dutch. caramel galette. And it was with bought puff pastry, which is lovely. It was with bought dolce de leche, which is, um, you know, a, um, you can make it with condensed milk by cooking it in the oven or boiling your cans on the stove. There's a recipe actually in our book. If you look up um, Alpha, right Alpha Jaws, we've got a recipe for that. But um, what it is, you take the pastry, do it with this pastry. You roll it out exactly the same way that Natty did. You spread a couple tablespoons of dolce de leche the caramel on top of it. Cold, of course. Yep. yep. Then you need to take some bananas and fry them off in some butter okay. and cardamom. Or and brown butter, sugar. Or butter and cinnamon. And then you, no, I don't think there's any, I don't I think, think there's, no, there's not. Oh, Sorry, the there's apples not. Yeah, yeah. There's no yes. sugar. And you just fry the bananas, put the bananas on top of the caramel, fold the sides in and bake it like this. It is so good. I, I, I added a splash of butter when I was <laughs> Frying the, the, the bananas. Combo, a match made in yeah. heaven, yeah. absolutely. 
And the other thing we did was we got some apples and we sliced the apples thinly. Yeah. We fried them in some butter, sugar. Yeah. You wanted butter, cinnamon. You wanted sugar. I didn't. I, I you think you it needed, needed it. a bit of sugar in um, the fruit. Sorry, yeah. you, you sprinkled sugar at the end of it um, on top of the bananas. You put Gemara, Gemara yeah. sugar on top yeah. of the bananas at the end. So fry the apples in butter and cinnamon, put them on the dolce de leche, fold the edges in, sprinkle with demerara sugar and cook it. It's so simple mm. and so, so good. Delicious. Recommended delicious. highly. Do you think you could add um, dolce de leche to the stone fruit? Yeah, I do. To the I think caramel pops. goes beautifully. Yeah. yeah. Would, Instead yeah. of the jam. Yeah. Exactly. And you probably, okay, someone said, can you substitute almond meal with anything? Well, the reason you've got the almond meal there is to soak up the juices, yeah. I think, while it's cooking. You could just leave it out and see how it goes. I, I think we, we did do that in our testing stages and we found and just you, do get a, you get a better result yeah, yeah. Um, could you because some, they're so juicy. But you could use some bread crumbs, um, fresh bread crumbs. I, I was going to say biscuit crumbs, yeah. like amaretti. Yeah. You could, you know, the Italian biscuit, you could just crush it up yeah. or any crushed biscuit and sprinkle that on the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, anchovy twists. Um, we serve them hot. Um, they're served hot from the oven and they cook for 20 minutes at 200. Let's have a look at them now. Yeah. They're really good. You know what? Are they delicious cold? Yes. They're actually delicious now. Shall we have a bite and see? Mm. I have to say, this okay. pastry, I know, I could hear the crunch when she bit into it. The pastry is exceptional. Look at that. And I promise you, if you think you are not a pastry maker, this is the pastry you have to make. I could eat this cold, but it's, it's nice and warm. Oh, the pastry is outstanding. Do you I won't do believe you? that you've made this when you've made it. I need a glass of wine. I agree. Mm. Is it too early for wine? <laughs> um, this is really good. I, I really recommend it so highly that you make it. Um, so 20 minutes in a hot oven, 200 mm. degrees or 400 Fahrenheit, yeah. 200 Celsius. Um, really delicious. Again, yeah. cook them from the mm. freezer. Might need to add five minutes to the cooking time. That's oh, the answer. Straight from the freezer. Straight from the freezer. That's it. Have a look at that. I mean, really, it looks like straight out of a patisserie, not out of yeah. your kitchen or my kitchen. You know, And the taste eyes. is fabulous. I mean, even for you who don't like anchovies. We could just stand here and talk about these for an hour. I know, it's so I know, good. I know. So please, if you make them, we would love you to go onto Instagram or Facebook and post your pictures and tag okay. us so we can share it with everybody because it's a joy for us to watch you make things that we've made in our cook-alongs. Okay. So I'm just bringing the galette back. That was like five minutes, but we'll just move it along. The egg wash has a little bit of water in it. Um, just makes it easier to apply. Yeah. And you're just going to go all the way around. Okay, demerara sugar is a, another version of sugar that's less processed, that's brown, the grains are bigger. You could use brown sugar, you could use... Um, well, what's nice about you know, it is that you see the grains. Yeah, it's, it's lovely. And it's, they don't dissolve yeah. when they're in the heat. Mm. Um, hi, Chris, welcome. Chris wants to know, um, she joined late, anything else for the savoury option? We talked about cheese, oh. we talked about goat's cheese and herbs. Yeah. Um, I think that's, what else would you want to eat in a pastry? You're not going to go down the eggplant route, they're too small. It's got to be something that can be a matchstick. Yeah. You know, what you could really do is put some artichoke in one, you know, some oh, like awesome. deli some artichokes. Some, yeah, some deli oh. artichokes would be nice as well. Um, really anything that you want to eat oh, in a pastry. olive paste. Even. Yeah, olive paste would be great actually. Yeah. I'm not an olive paste fan. I love olives, but I don't love olive paste, but I think it's a good yeah. idea. Yeah, I think it's yeah, a I think great idea. You get a very similar result to the anchovy. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Dorit wants to know what page in the book. We have the galette on 153 and the anchovies are in the last, are in chapter, the last chapter, chapter, which is our savoury chapter. On 290. But the, the recipe for the actual pastry is with the galette. I mean, I think everyone needs to go now today after we've finished and bake yourself a couple batches of anchovy twists, put them on trays in the freezer and put them in plastic bags and you're set for the next three months of entertaining. Yeah. And this is like, this really is such a quick, easy dessert. Yeah, yeah. Um, and just all anyone needs in yeah. summer, a, like a slice of this. And I was saying to Lisa before that it's really nice to serve it with um, cold, well, obviously cold, ice cream. Um, but we have a recipe also in the book 
for a whiskey and lime. It's actually a, it's an ice cream, but it's a, 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 not one where you need to make a custard, not one where you need to turn, um, so more like a semi-freddo, and it would go beautifully with the galette. It's so good. It's just so good. Um, and so that's it. So that's going in the oven for 40 minutes. I'm just going to transfer it onto the hot. Would you put it in the, oh, okay, you're going to cook it now? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then. How long could you keep that at room temperature for? I'm uh, sorry, in the fridge for, before baking it, that fruit in it? Not too long. A, a few hours. I would be okay. And here is the one that we have made already, which I need my the tray. So I'm going to just. Is the whiskey lime ice cream in this book or is yes. it in our last No, it's book? in that book. Yes. Yeah. 240. So the whiskey lime ice cream is on page 240. And I make this one often. And as I said, you don't need to churn it. You just mix it. It has egg yolks, sugar, whiskey, lime juice, cream, and lime zest. It is absolutely fantastic. It's in the book, page 240, whiskey lime ice cream. Um, put that back in the fridge while that's raining. Oh, okay. So. All right. So someone said a uh, Facebook page earlier we called we talked about was called Friday Night. Um, it's a members only, which means you've just got to apply. And it's a really nice group where they talk recipes all day and all night. And that's where the banana toffee tart came from. Now this galette looks, I want to hold it up for you. Yeah, because, because what I love is the jammy bits where the fruit has softened. Um, Have a look and at a that. little bit of jam leakage, which is just beautiful. Um, so the galette cooks it's at so the galette cooks at two two hundred degrees Celsius, four hundred Fahrenheit. This pastry needs that hot temperature because you want it mm. to get into the oven, and before the butter can melt, you want it to make the layers, you know, expand. Yes. So you get a beautiful puff, Perfect. sort of a puff slash flakiness that's really unique. And that's um, why that's why nice um, the colder your pastry is before it goes in the oven the better. Okay. It looks absolutely beautiful. And imagine just serving that um, mm. to your family or for yourself or to friends. Um, yes, it was baked with the baking paper or parchment. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Any more questions there? No. Okay. I think I'm going home to make an apricot one. Oh, I wish you couldn't have heard that sound. Yeah. It's like flaky pastry all the way through from the top to the bottom. It's really good and it smells like summer. Mm. It's beautiful. And a bit of liquid does come out of the fruit. You can't help that. No, but it goes but look at that. It's, it's beautiful. absolutely beautiful. beautiful. Really amazing. Amazing, amazing. So that is our, oh, it smells so good. That is our fruit galette um, and our anchovy twist. Yeah. I just want to tell you a couple of things about what's happening with us. We are, we were selling these aprons, which we put on sale two weeks ago and we're sold out now. So there's no more aprons left. Um, we are taking pre-orders um, with prepayment and then we'll do another batch order next year with a delivery in early Feb. So if you want, go to our website, which is mondaymorningcookingclub.com.au and you can pre-order the small or the regular. We've changed. If you've been online for yeah. the first batch, you had to tell us which size you want. Now we've gone a little bit, you know, so tech savvy <laughs> and you can actually order a small or regular. Navi wears the small. I wear the regular. They are... I've just got to tell you about it because it is so comfortable. It's this stretchy cotton that Organic is, is stretchy beautiful. It's made in yeah. Australia. It's got our logo on it. It's got a thing for your pen pocket. Mm. It's got a pocket for your glasses and it's got a pocket for your phone. And I, I know I sound like I'm doing the big sell, but I want to tell no, you it's, it's a fantastic apron. And it feels a bit, um, you know, a bit glam in the kitchen. I feel like a bit special when I wear it, especially when I keep my... No, no. When I keep my apron on during Friday night dinner, which I often do. So check out the aprons. I don't know about you, but I always forget to take mine off. Yeah, I quite <laughs> like it. Um, the other thing is our book, of course, is always for sale on the website, but we've got a few signed copies left um, if you'd like to go purchase those. And, um, you know, we hope that all of you have this book already. And if you don't, it's really something that... We couldn't live without, and we hope that when you get your copy, if you don't have it already, you'll feel the same way about it. Um, all right, so Nettie's going to put that in the oven, and then we'll say our farewell. Um, we are going to have a little break for a couple of weeks, and wish all of you who are celebrating Christmas a really happy, safe, and peaceful Christmas, and hope you can spend it 
with family, even if it's on Zoom, or you know, with delicious food if you can't have your family with you. <laughs> All you um, need is our cookbooks. And um, we wish everybody a happy new year and hope that 2021 is, you know, a good and safe and healthy one and this coronavirus, you know, moves out the way soon. Sending love to all of you who are doing hard lockdown at the moment in London, in New York. I yeah. think it's pretty tough. And Sydney, I hope that we, I, I haven't seen much. what's happening, but hopefully yeah. we're going to get through this one. Um, do you send the new book to the USA? We won't, we, we don't ship from here, but if you go to Amazon USA or any, any Amazon in the world, you can find our new book. Yeah. Now for Something Sweet, Monday Morning Cooking Club. Yeah. And lots, of, lots of great baking if you're stuck at home yeah really so everyone who's stuck yeah. at home winter summer yeah. yeah perfect we love it and please yeah. don't forget to take a pic of what you're cooking and tag us on instagram oh yeah if you make the galette or the anchovy twist we'd love to hear from you we really yeah. want to see how it goes yeah and we're sending lots of love from all of us to all of you and we've loved this um online cooking yeah. community we've created together this year that's really been a silver lining yeah. of of coronavirus for us Absolutely. is that we're connected with all of you, which we may not have done otherwise. Well, we found a way. So all the best for 2021. Please all keep in touch. Let us know what you're cooking and keep on cooking and stay safe. See Happy you. New Year, Bye everyone. all. See you later.